Welcome to another episode of How To With Tara Rule. This is my series on how to file a lawsuit without an attorney. And before you get all nervous, no, it's not hard to do. It's actually quite easy. It's just confusing. So I'm here to help you do it because I've actually done it myself and you can see my story here and I'll put links down below. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the basics, the very first step in what you do, how to do your initial filing, and I'm gonna talk about some things that I've learned along the way, special tips and tricks to ensure that this goes as smoothly and easily as possible for you. I'm gonna be posting weekly videos uh, every step of the way. So this video is going to be about your original filing, the steps you need to take before filing, and how to actually file it, and then the next video is going to be about how to write the actual complaint. Now, before you say I'm not qualified to talk about this, you're probably right, but the fact of the matter is I have a TikTok following, and due to that, I have learned the proper protocol, the steps, and every step of the way how to do this correctly, thanks to my followers, thanks to people who are attorneys, lawmakers, people who work for the state, the federal government. So I did not by any means do this alone, but now I'm gonna teach you how to do it, because it's really, it's not hard. If you are filing what's called pro se, which means you're representing yourself, you're not using an attorney, in federal court, also known as district court, which is where you're going to wanna file, I'm telling you that right now, um, the judges already have your side. They are trained specifically to have the mindset that everything the pro se plaintiff is saying is true and factual. It is up to the defense attorneys to prove that you're lying. So as long as you're telling the truth and you know what law they broke, you're set. As I mentioned a moment ago, you will be wanting to file more than likely in federal court, also known as district court. And the reason for this is, like I said, they already have your side, but also uh, state court isn't really that keen on having pro se litigants. They just aren't. I don't really understand the reason why that is, but because of this, you're gonna wanna find a federal law that has been violated. And before you freak out, before you're like, no, this was a state malpractice case. They violated, let's say New York state law. Don't worry. All state laws are based on federal laws. So we can find one for you and all you need is one federal law because then what you can do is incorporate something called supplemental jurisdiction, which is adding the state laws in there. And we will go into more of that in my second video of this series where we write up the complaint. But for now, let's get back to the basics. How do you know where to file? You're gonna wanna file in the federal court or district court, the district in which the event happened. So not where you live, not where the defendant lives, but the event in which it happened. So let's say a hospital did you dirty and the hospital is located in a certain county in the state you live in, you're gonna wanna file in that county. It doesn't matter if you don't live in that county or the doctor doesn't live in that county, you wanna file in the county where the illegal activity happened. You can find this out by Googling it. You can just say, um, you know, the county where the event happened, district court, and it will pop up. It'll pop up which court you wanna file in. Now you're gonna to wanna to look into uh, what laws have been violated and you can still look, still I would recommend looking into the state laws that have been violated as well, but you need at least one federal statute. And you can look up things like federal laws pertaining to XYZ, federal laws pertaining to medical malpractice, things of that nature. You can, I know a lot of people use like open source AI and things like that, chat GPT. You can certainly use it as a resource, especially as a search engine kind of deal because Let's face it, if you're pro se, if you're representing yourself, you don't have access to LexisNexis and these other databases that attorneys have access to. The thing you wanna look out for though is double, triple check that the cases that ChatGPT or whatever open source AI program you're using give you are real because these AI programs have a history of having hallucinations, meaning if the prompt is just to give you an answer, if the answer doesn't really exist, they'll make something up. And this is, it's a rare occurrence, but it does happen. So just make sure to double check. Now, once you've figured out what they call it cause of action or causes of action, meaning what laws have been violated and what statutes are you going to sue the defendant for or under, you wanna check the statute of limitations. So you can do that by Googling whatever the issue is. So medical malpractice, statute of limitations, and it will come up for the state you live in. Each federal statute has a section about relief, meaning how do you get relief? If a federal law has been broken and someone has done you dirty, it will tell you what kind of relief is available to you. So that can be something like administrative action, like you know the, the court will come in and force the defendant to do the right thing. Not all federal statutes 
mean you're entitled to financial compensation, which is why you want the state supplemental jurisdiction. Again, we'll get into that in the next video. However, it's important to look into what the remedies are because you need to know what steps you need to take first. Because before you can file a lawsuit, you have to have to have to make sure you did the right administrative remedies first, meaning you have to file a complaint with the organization in which it happened. And generally speaking, they want you to file complaints with the proper state and federal organizations that oversee these things. So if it was a medical thing, you know, Health and Human Services, Office of Civil Rights, um, Department of Education in New York State for like nurse practitioners and stuff, things of that nature. However, if you don't know what you're doing or you did your best and you can prove you did your best, like I said, if you're a pro se litigant, the court is already on your side and they have to give you a degree of leniency when it comes to these things because you're not an attorney and you can't be expected to understand this stuff. Generally speaking, it's easier to go in person to file your complaint and there are ways to do it. Let's say the event happened in a place that you don't live, there are ways around it. Just call the district court, call the district court where the event happened and ask them how to go through with that. But we're gonna talk about today doing it in person. I would recommend dress nicely. I know it sounds stupid because you're just going to see the court clerk, but dress like you would be going to court, present yourself in a professional manner. Make sure you have your documents all uh, neatly filed. You wanna make sure you have multiple forms of identification and just remember you will be searched. You're going to the district court. So there's a lot of security, it's a whole process. So make sure kind of like prepare like you're going through TSA. Make sure any notes or things you wanna remember, you write them down because often they're not gonna let you bring your phone in there when you see the court clerk. You will have to pay a filing fee and this can range you anywhere from, you know, depending on the state or the district, 50 bucks all the way to like five, 600 bucks. So there are options for people who are lower income and you can find this form and all other forms you need online. You wanna Google your district court. So let's say you're in New York, like in my case, Northern New York District Court Pro Se Forms. And it will bring you to a website that has all the forms that anyone could possibly need. You're not gonna need to fill out all of them. I'm telling you right now the ones you will need. So if you're just doing a basic federal case with basic stuff, and you are low income and you can't afford the filing fee, you wanna find the form for Informa Pauperis, which is basically like, it's based off the term pauper, like you're poor, like you can't afford the payment. And this is something that you will present to the district court prior to filing your complaint because they're gonna need time to approve it. Generally, you need to have proof of income, you know, file these forms and this can take many months. So make sure that you know what your statute of limitations is. If you file that, you just have to make sure you tell the court that the statute of limitations is coming up because they'll either expedite it or they will kind of start the clock at the date you filed the in pauperous, in form of pauperous form, if that makes sense. Because remember the statute of limitations is the amount of time that you have in between the event taking place and you filing a lawsuit. Now, again, like I said, if you have filed with certain state and federal agencies, like we'll use New York as an example, um, some of the federal laws that I was using, you have to do the proper administrative remedies first and file with the state and federal agencies that oversee these federal statutes. However, you know, investigations take a long time. And if it's been a certain amount of time has passed, like 180 days, and you have not heard anything back from the state or federal organization, you can go ahead and file that lawsuit. Um, that is something that you can ask the organization in question. You can call Department of Health, Health and Human Services, whatever the case may be, and ask them. So if you have a medical malpractice case, let's say the statute of limitations in your state from the date it happened, or you became aware that it happened, this is also something important. Let's say you were in a coma and then you wake up from the coma two years later and you realize you were in a coma because the doctor screwed up. It's from the date you become aware that the law was broken. Do you feel me? So from the date it happened to the date you file it. If you missed the statute of limitations, again, you're pro se and there is a degree of leniency. Um, it's always worth asking the court about if they have any sort of um, extenuating circumstances that they'll allow you to file late. Um, some states have different forms that you can fill out, especially if it's, you know, related to something like, hey, I was going through a divorce or I have a health condition or blah, 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 whatever the case may be. Um, oftentimes, you know, they, they want to allow you as someone who's not an attorney and can't afford an attorney or doesn't want an attorney to have the right to a fair trial under the constitution 
and under whatever. Side note, these administrative remedies like filing with Health and Human Services or whatever the case may be, they have their own statutes of limitations. So if you, generally speaking, if it's let's say medical related, right, you have um, like 90 days from the event to file a complaint. Now, let's say you didn't know that and you missed the 90 days. Again, communicate with your local district court's clerk and they will tell you what to do. More often than not, they'll say, you're pro se, there was no way for you to know that, we'll just file anyway and we'll make a note of it. Just wanted to throw that out there. If your district allows you to be an electronic filer, I would highly, highly, highly recommend doing that because it's gonna save you a lot of time, it's gonna save you a lot of money because you can just file everything electronically through their portal. Now it's a government website, so the UI user interface is atrocious and it's slow, but you really want to try your best to get into that pacer system because it's gonna make your life so much easier. I know a lot of people have asked me this question, which is like, why do I talk about this on the internet? The reason attorneys tell their clients not to talk about things is because people have a tendency to exaggerate the truth or you know, maybe they're feeling emotional and they're not saying something that's 100% like accurate. Uh, there's a fine line when it comes to exaggerating things uh, between libel, which is something that's written that is untrue about someone else that can harm them um, financially, emotionally, socially, um, you know, defamation, which is the same deal, except just it's any kind of statement um, or slander. Again, like, you know, that's generally, you say something on the internet verbally, you make a video about it. Um, as long as what you're saying is accurate and 100% true and you have evidence to back it up, you can do what you want. Sometimes, you know, even media involvement or something going viral can really help your case in some cases. But make sure what you're saying is 100% true. Uh, it's important to note that this can take a long time. Generally speaking, things are about 21 days. So somebody files something with the court, the other person has 21 days to respond. Then you have 21 days to respond, blah, 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 blah. It can take months or years. You know, oftentimes things are settled outside of court, but don't expect that to happen right away. It's not going to, because remember, the defense attorneys are charging their clients. If they weren't charging their clients by the hour, you know, if you're dealing with an organization and the attorneys that work for that organization are just on retainer and they're on salary, they may just want you to go away and they may just offer a settlement right up front. But that is extraordinarily rare because more often than not, people are using defense attorneys that are charging by the hour. So don't expect to file something, even if it's outrageous and you have all the proof in the world. Expect months or a year to go by before you actually get to the point where settlements can even be discussed. Something I would highly recommend is finding a pro se program. So there are many law offices that will, that do have uh, pro se programs that are free to the public. I am personally using one. If you can't find one through Google or word of mouth, uh, most district court offices, I think all of them, if you go and meet with the clerk, they will hook you up with their pro se program at no cost to you. If you don't have an attorney, nobody can tell you exactly what to do. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but they can't give you legal advice, but they can guide you. They can tell you what steps you need to take, in what order, you can ask them questions like, hey, when I file XYZ, do I also need to include XYZ? They just can't tell you things like, hey, if you really wanna get them, um, I would include this law. They can't tell you what laws to add or take out. They can't do that, but they can you know, help guide you on the protocol at no cost to you. Something I'm gonna tell you right now is, make sure your complaint is done because when you go to file you're gonna file the complaint usually a cover sheet your evidence if you have any and any other forms that you know you need to file sometimes there's like mandatory disclosures meaning they're gonna give the defense attorneys all the information that they need to properly respond you have to look up your district courts local rules they're very confusing we'll go through those in other videos um, and again, the next video after this is going to be how to write up your complaint. But I'm telling you right now, you need to have your complaint written and ready to go. Even if you're filing the in form of papyrus, have it ready to go because you never know when they're going to say, Hey, we need that complaint because we're moving forward with the case. And generally speaking, you got 21 days, at least in New York, you got 21 days to get things done. You can save yourself a lot of time later on during the discovery process if you can, and this is gonna be a, if you know somebody or if you have the funds to do so, get the evidence prior 
to filing. If you have a family attorney or know somebody who's an attorney, you can pay them to say, hey, uh, subpoena my entire medical record and the internal audit trail from the hospital. I can't just go to a hospital and say, give me the internal audit trail, but an attorney can, an attorney can. And if you have that and you can file that with your complaint, even better. Because even though the judge is supposed to be on your side as a pro se litigant, defense attorneys are predatory and they're gonna prey on the fact that you don't, you're not an attorney and you may not know what, what the protocol is or how to properly conduct yourself. And that's okay. But if you walk in there with your evidence, it's way better. And a lot of attorneys even tell you, don't do that. Don't show your hand, keep things in your back pocket. If you're, as long as you are telling the truth and nothing but the truth and you got nothing to hide, put it all out there up front. You have nothing to lose, zero to lose because you don't need to play games. You don't need to keep things in your back pocket and pull it out later to try to ha ha, ha ha. You know, you don't need to trick anybody if you're telling the truth, period. This is gonna be really hard. As soon as you file pro se, and this is the biggest, most important piece of advice I can give you. You need to figure out a way in your head to, this is not healthy mental health advice, but it's the way you do this, compartmentalize. You are no longer the client. You are no longer you. You are no longer the person who has been wronged or hurt. You're not, you're an attorney. And you, the person who's been hurt, is your client. Go into attorney mode. You're not, there's no, you can't have emotion in this. Defense attorneys, especially if you have a good case and you're pro se, they're just gonna try to get under your skin and piss you off. Cause as soon as you act a fool, case closed, you're out. A judge doesn't wanna deal with somebody who doesn't know what the heck they're doing, is filing things incorrectly, is rude, and is emotionally unstable. And I don't care how emotionally stable you are, if you've been wronged and a defense attorney is trying to say things that are gonna upset you, they're trying to upset you. You can't get upset. I'll be honest with you, the first week, when I filed stuff and defense attorneys started doing things to try to get under my skin, I punched a hole through my drywall and I almost called it quits. So what I did is I found, I created a character in my head, an attorney. I watched the movie, um, The Burial. I watched The Burial and I just, in my head, I was like, okay, how can I like create a version of kind of like Jamie Foxx's character in that movie because he's so badass. How can I kind of be that attorney, but make it my own, like add in some like, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, you know, Angelina Jolie vibes in there, some, um, you know, tank girl in there, like really create a character in your head and be that character. You have to be the most badass attorney out there. You don't see attorneys punching holes in the drywall when a defense attorney does something, because listen, it's business. The defense attorneys are just doing their job. They are not even emotionally invested. Even if they act like they're pissed off or trying to intimidate you, they don't care. They're just doing their job like everybody else. So don't take it personally. And you're not gonna take it personally if you're an attorney. Got it? And you have to remember the defense attorneys are not only just predatory, usually in general, um, but they're also predatory toward their clients, especially if they know their client has no case. At the end of the day, they charge like 500 bucks an hour. Also, their clients are gonna lie to them. Don't assume they're making things up to get to you. Their clients are probably lying to them. They're just going with what they've been told. But even if they are lying on behalf of their clients because they know you're pro se and they think you're stupid, don't let it get under your skin. Just remember that they're Praying less on you and praying more on their client. Because if you're pro se, they're not getting any money from you. Unless they cross claim you and file a countersuit, they're not getting any money from you. So their only reason to move forward is because they're taking money from their client. So they're kind of, if anything, helping you out in a way. I look at them as like an ally because they're taking money from the person I want to be screwed over. And uh, they're preying on them. So, you know, they're kind of acting the part. I almost look at them mentally to get through it emotionally as like an informant, right? Like people who like, like somebody who works for the FBI or something and, or, and is acting like they're, you know, part of some kind of organization when they're really not, they're playing the part, but you know, they kind of like wink to their other informants kind of deal. So that's how I emotionally get through it. This is another huge piece of advice. Always play nice with the defense attorneys because the judge is watching. If they're like, if they're like, hey, we want a very, very long extension and it's ridiculous. And if they're trying to file motions to screw you over, no matter what they do, no matter what they lie about, no matter what stupid evidence they present to the court that is just not even relevant, no matter how they try to screw you over, always do the nice thing. So if they've done a million things to screw you over and then one day they say, hey, we want a 60 day extension to do something, which is ridiculous, give it to them, give it to them. It's ultimately up to the judge anyway, if they accept it or not, but give it to them. Because if you argue, it's more paperwork for the clerk, it's more paperwork for the judge and more work for chambers. 
do what is going to make the judge's life, the clerk's life, and chamber's life easiest. Okay? Don't fight with them. This type of lawsuit isn't for something like small claims court. So this is something where your damages are more than $10,000 and it's not a cut and dry thing like, hey, somebody hit my car and they need to pay me for the car damages. No, this is like a federal law has been violated or state laws have been broken and your damages exceed $10,000. I know this video was a bit more nuanced, but the next videos are going to be very step-by-step uh, -step guides of each step along the way. So next video, we're gonna go over your complaint and how to write it, and it's gonna be a step-by-step -step guide. Step one, the heading of your complaint. Step two, numbering your factual allegations. It's gonna be step-by-step -step guide. And we're also going to go over serving the defense and how to um, serve them and your evidence. Please be sure to like and subscribe. And if you follow me for a while, you know this whole process has been extraordinarily expensive and difficult for me. So if you wanna help me out, please subscribe to my Patreon. And if you're more of a one-time person deal, I'm gonna link both my Patreon and my GoFundMe down below. I have a GoFundMe to kind of help cover some of the cost of all this. So if you're feeling like you wanna donate something, that would be super, super helpful. And if nothing else, please share this with your family and friends. I wanna get the word out that it's actually pretty easy to have a fair trial without having to spend a ton of money on an attorney um, and you have a lot more power than you think. So I will see you next time for the next video on how to type up and file your complaint. Bye.